Well, good morning. Welcome to St Cuthbert's Church. It's Christmas time and you can see that we've got the church decorated and the Christmas tree lights are on. And we're in a joyful mood for this season of the year. We're meeting today in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go any further, we'll have our traditional sorry prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. <clears throat> have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the focus prayer for today being Christmas. Let us pray. God in Trinity, eternal unity of perfect love, gather the nations to be one family and draw us into your holy life through the birth of Emmanuel, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John and I'm reading this from the modern version, the CEV, the Contemporary English Version. In the beginning was the one who is called the Word. The Word was with God and was truly God. From the very beginning the Word was with God and with this Word God created all things. Nothing was made without the Word. Everything that was created received its life from him. And his life gave light to everyone. The light keeps shining in the dark and darkness has never put it out. God sent a man named John who came to tell about the light and to lead all people to have faith. John wasn't that light, he only came to tell about the light. The true light that shines on everyone was coming into the world. The word was in the world, but no one knew him. Though God had made the world with his word, he came to his own world, but his own nation did not welcome him. Yet some people accepted him and put their faith in him. So he gave them the right to be the children of God. They were not God's children by nature or because of any human desires. God himself was the one who made them his children. The word became a human being and lived here with us. We saw his true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. From him all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. Now this is the Gospel of the Lord. Now that reading, which we traditionally read at Christmas time, is what's called the prologue to John's Gospel and it's in stark contrast to the other accounts of the Christmas story. Most people when they think of the Christmas story think of Luke who tells us about shepherds and about angels in the sky and about the visit to the stable and the baby in the manger and all the rest of it and when Luke tells us that he's telling us or he's describing the scene and it's he gets us to look in on the scene john takes almost the direct opposite approach he is in the scene looking out to the world 
And rather than just describing the scene, he tells us about the meaning of this event. And it's the meaning that is important to him. He's not interested in shepherds or animals or mangers or anything like that. But he is interested in the person of Jesus that comes as a human being into the world, the Son of God. And the context that he sets it in is quite remarkable because according to John, it is the number one event in the history of the entire universe. It's not just a story of long ago about some cute kid that's born that we're celebrating, whose birthday we're celebrating. It's not so much that for John. What he's on about is saying this coming of the word into the world is highly significant for you and for me. Because when we look at that baby that's been born, this isn't just some other child. In some special sense, and it's described in poetic terms in this reading, that's us being born. Us, yes, us. That baby is us. Because we, through the coming of the word, become the children of God ourselves. We become, we become the children of God. Not through our efforts, not through our desires or our wishes, but by the action of God. It's completely God, it's a complete God action here. And we receive that wonderful gift that we become the children of God at Christmas. So it's not just about the birth of Jesus. In a funny kind of way, it's the birth of every single person on earth. It's all our births all wrapped into one as we become God's children born into his spirit. It is that powerful. And instead of having to sit in the darkness, instead of having to sit with our frustrations and all our bad feelings, we can be the people that look out and see the light. The light is shining into our dark world and is enlightening us. We, you and I, are enlightened by this process. That's the significance of this moment. And it's, it's one of utter glory, joy, happiness. It's just beyond any description we can make. And perhaps that's why John doesn't actually try and describe it in physical terms, but just makes poetic illusions to the impact upon it. So this Christmas, we are celebrating our salvation. It's all entirely good news. So have a very happy Christmas. Have a joyful Christmas. And um, even those of you that feel you're in the dark, Remember, this is a message particularly for you. The light is going to shine into your dark corners and help you. May God bless you this Christmas. Amen.
Father God, help us to remember that the Christmas story did not end in the stable, but continued as Jesus grew into a man, unnoticed by the world until his appearance at the temple, which was for him his spiritual home on earth. As 2021 draws to a close and a new year begins, and with it the next chapter of our lives, help us to grow in faith and wisdom and to recognise your presence with us in all we do and say. We share with you our love and concern for people in a dark place today. We have on our hearts the friends and loved ones of the victims of violence and hatred. We pray that they will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them. We pray for tolerance in our society. We pray for people of every race and in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving power among nations. We earnestly pray that the coming year will see an end to the pandemic, militancy and terrorism, and pray for all who are striving to find a peaceful solution to war-torn parts of our world. Father God, we can see in today's story of Jesus the same problems we so often face, to follow your call whilst at the same time pleasing our families and friends. Sometimes we can't do both, so help us to live our lives with care and integrity. Most of all, we thank you for your understanding when we make mistakes and ask for your guidance whenever we face a challenge in the year ahead. As we look forward to the year that is ahead, we have faith that God will supply every need of ours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Finally, we come to the Christmas blessing. May the Father, who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world, shed that love upon you, his children, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those whom you love this day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>